Hi, everyone, and welcome to MOS at Home. Uh, today, we're going to be doing some fun engineering activities. My name is Becca, my pronouns are she and her, and I'm an educator at the Museum of Science. And I'm joined today by... Hi, everybody. My name is Karen. I'm super excited to be here with you today to sort of learn a little bit more about what is engineering and the engineering design process. So Becca, why don't you explain what we're actually going to be doing today? Sure. So today we are going to be doing a fun activity called How Slow Can Your Parachute Go? That's kind of a fun name that we gave to it, but basically we're going to see if we can make a parachute that can go as slow as five feet per second. We'll see. That's a challenge. Now this is gearing up for our National Engineers Week, which is going to be coming uh, next week on February 21st to February 27th. And so you'll be seeing a little bit more engineering content coming out on our social media starting very soon. Now for this activity, if you would like to kind of join along and kind of make your own parachute, you don't really need that many materials. In fact, these are just an example of materials that you could use. So you could pause this video now and you could go and look for some of these materials and come back uh, and start playing again. Now, if you don't have every single one of these materials, you're more than welcome to experiment and see what else would work. Now, when I say parachute material here, what that really means is probably something like cloth or plastic or paper or aluminum foil. There are a lot of options, so you can make whatever you would like. All right, so let's think a little bit about why we're doing this today. Karen, do you want to explain a little more? Yeah, so when we say the word engineer, I know that kind of gives people sort of a, a fast-paced heart. They get really scared, like, I can't be an engineer. I mean, engineers build rockets and computers, and I can't do that. Be told, engineers look for problems and brainstorm solutions. Right, Becca? Yeah. I mean, one of my favorite examples of something that is a great engineering object is a drinking straw. That's engineering. At some point in the past, people said, I want to figure out a way to get liquid from the cup to my lips. I don't actually want to sip it. So they invented a straw. That's engineering. So there's lots of different ways to be engineers. There are all sorts of different careers. My father was a computer and electrical engineer. Um, engineers also like chemical engineers help develop new medicines to help humans. You have materials engineers that are making new and different fabrics for different purposes. So there's lots of ways to be an engineer. So the most important thing is to look for a problem. If you find a problem, you then wanna think about sort of how can we solve that problem? And there's a whole design process that goes into this. So Becca, maybe you can share what the different steps are of the engineering design process to kind of help everybody get an idea of what we're gonna be doing today. Sure, so we do have quite a few steps in the engineering design process. And the first one is what Karen kind of already explained, to ask, basically to look for a problem that you need to solve. After that is imagine or start to brainstorm some ideas that might be able to solve this problem. And once you've decided on one, you plan. And that way you can write out all of the steps that you want to take. You can sort of make maybe a drawing or a diagram to figure out what you want it to look like. Then you can create this solution and test it out, of course. Um, and finally, once you've done that, you can improve because it might not always work the right way on the first time. So it's important to make sure that you are able to improve or change one variable at a time to make sure that you are getting the results that you want. So I actually heard that failure is incredibly important when it comes to engineering and science in general. So failure is not a bad thing. It is an important learning step in the engineering design process. Absolutely. So today, uh, Karen and I are here to show you that parachute activity. And as I said, one of the goals of this activity from the museum is that you can get your parachute to fall in about five feet per second. Now that's kind of a good amount of space and a pretty slowish time when you think about it in reality. If I were to drop simply this ball of string, well, that would be a lot less than a five feet per second. What <laughs> if I were to save my dinosaur? 
Yes, we do want to make sure that we can save our little toy at the very bottom. So what we've done, um, and again, you don't have to do it exactly the same. You could think how fast can you make your parachute fall? Maybe if you can make it spin or go sideways, but we're going with the slowest parachute today. So we've asked ourselves that problem. We have already thought of a few different ideas. And as Karen said, we are going to try to protect our dinosaur, or in my case, a little tiny toy bear. Um, and we also were able to plan. So Karen, do you want to explain your, your design? Yeah. Plans? So I came up with a plan. You can see here in my drawing, I have my little dinosaur down here who I'm trying to keep safe. Maybe he's jumping out of an airplane for some reason, trying to avoid the asteroid impact. Who knows? Um, I made a plan with uh, a parachute. I thought that I might use cloth to start out with. And then I have six inch string. So four coming off of the parachute and two kind of holding on the harness to the collar of our dinosaur here. And this is what I brought to Becca earlier and said, hey, this is my plan. Do you think we can create it? And she looked at me and said, well, I don't have cloth. I do have some other materials that we could try out. What do you think, Becca? Did you, did you get one made earlier? I did. I was able to start creating one. I decided to use aluminum foil to start because I thought it would be kind of easy to mold it into the design that Karen had. So what I did is I cut those strings that were uh, six inches. I measured them uh, with my measuring tape and I made sure that they were all six inches just to Karen's design. Although I don't have a dinosaur, which is funny because I do love dinosaurs, mm -hmm. but I do have this little bear. And so I'm going to attach him to the very bottom of this parachute and see if we can get it to work. What do you think, Karen? Did I do a decent job making your, your uh, drawing come to reality? I think it looks pretty good. I mean, you can't get it exactly like this because you didn't have all the same materials, but I appreciate that you were using your materials to help me out here. Absolutely. So now that I've attached the little bear with some tape uh, and I've attached all of the sides with tape as well, we're going to see how fast this will go. What do you think, Karen? Is it going to go pretty slowly or do you think it's going to be a little too fast? Aluminum foil might be too heavy. But maybe it's big enough that it'll capture enough air to actually slow it way down. Only one way to find out. All right, so let's try it. We're going to leave the bear there. Good luck, bear. Well, that was pretty, pretty fast. fast. Let's try it one more time. Let's see if maybe it was some user error. I'm going to make sure my aluminum foil is out. All right, ready? It was oh, better. A little slower, yeah. Maybe if up with some more air. Okay, but we've been able to test this out with the aluminum foil. If we wanted to make it slower, we would have to maybe change a variable. And so I think it makes sense that maybe we keep the string length the same. Maybe we keep the object at the bottom the same, but maybe we change the material on the top. What do you think, Karen? I think that's a good idea. When we're doing experiments, it's really important to change one thing at a time. So you could use that word variable. If it's a word you haven't heard before, it just means sort of something about your test. Um, so instead of changing, say, the string length and the material and the object we're trying to, you know, hold on to at the bottom of the parachute, if it works great, you don't know which one of those things actually was uh, helping in your success. So it's important to change one thing at a time. So Becca, I think changing the material of the parachute itself is a great thing to change. All right. So, so maybe, do you have materials to try that out? Why don't we try tissue paper? Okay. It's very light. And I remember it's lighter. Um, uh, maybe, yeah, maybe it could capture the air better. It is more permeable. I wonder if the air might flow through it. Does it feel that thin like a tissue? It feels thin. I have folded it a few times though. Um, so it's not just one layer of tissue paper. Mm -hmm. I actually folded it uh, twice. I folded it once the long way and then one more time so that we actually have quite a few layers of tissue paper. And it is light. And I remember you said that maybe the aluminum foil would be a little bit too heavy. So perhaps this might work. So I've also been able to create another set of six six inch strings. I'm going to attach them to the sides. Now, if you're doing this at home, you can also feel free to like cut your uh, fabrics a little bit more. In this case, I could cut the tissue paper a little bit more, but I think I wanna try it in this square shape. I wonder if that would really change anything. 
I didn't cut the aluminum foil, so it would be good to keep things uh, organized. So is it about the piece. same size as the al aluminum foil was? It is a little bit bigger, but not okay. too much bigger. Because that is so. another variable that we need to be thinking of when making our parachute. So for those of you who hopefully are trying this at home now with us or trying it out after you watch this video, think about the sizes, because that's also going to determine how much air it can capture. Um, if you've ever seen humans actually jump out of airplanes using parachutes, some of them are really big and wide. Some of them kind of look like a balloon shape. So there's lots of different shapes. As long as you can capture that air, that's what's really important to slowing down whatever your payload is. That's in my case, I was hoping to make it my dinosaur, but I did in my picture. Um, but if it was a human, it would be the human that we were trying to keep protected and slow way down. Or one of my favorite examples of use of parachutes, Becca, space capsules. Of course. So when our astronauts are returning from the International Space Station, they're in uh, sort of smaller capsules. And as they move through the atmosphere of the planet Earth, when they get to a certain point, their parachutes have to deploy because they're going so fast. You wouldn't want that space capsule slamming into the water or into the land at that highest speed. So they have really big parachutes that open up, to help slow them way down. Absolutely. That's definitely important to make sure that they stay safe. So, mm -hmm. so far, I've been able to kind of pull all of my strings to the inside of my parachute and I've taped them together. Now I'm going to add the um, extra sort of side springs that strings that Karen has on her plan to make sure that we can then attach them to my little bear. All if right, it's something Karen. that's easier for you guys to tie your strings, you can do that as well, but just try to make sure that they all stay the same length so you're not changing too many variables. Sure. And for me, yeah, and for me, I would say it's taping is easier. Uh, I'm not very good at knots. They come undone pretty easily. Um, oh, so I figured- That would not help your bear. It would not help my bear, no. And I'm going to tape my bear to these strings. All right, so we've got part of our uh, parachute sort of ready so far. And I do have my two strings. I'm going to attach that to my bear. So I'll attach one string to each side of the bear. So the weight is kind of equally distributed at the bottom and hope that maybe that will keep my bear safe. Although if I wanted my bear to be safe, I probably would attach more to the bottom near the bear uh, to make sure. So if you're trying to test that out and you want to make sure that your little dinosaur or your little bear or whatever toy or object you end up using is safe, you can be a little bit more careful with maybe putting some bubble wrap or something on the bottom. I do make sure that you're not dropping something that is incredibly breakable. Absolutely. Uh, because if it does not slow fast enough and it crashes into your floor, it could break. So just make sure that it's something, maybe even like a bouncy ball uh, could be a good um, gentle object to try to drop. And also you might want to drop it from higher up than what I'm doing right now. Um, they, it could be good to do it from the top of a stair. Just make sure that there's no one underneath you. You don't want to drop it on anyone. Or standing on a stool or even like I see his head behind her standing on that carefully with your grown-ups nearby just in case uh, but to get that little bit of more height right Unfortunately, so more height our, is definitely key because our right computer now, cameras only show so much space here right I know that was the problem I want to make sure that it can be seen so I have a design that looks well somewhat similar to Karen's drawing um what do you think Karen a little bit I think it looks pretty good you got the four strings coming down from the top you got holding on to your bear. I'd say we're doing pretty good. All right, so I think we can test this one out. Uh, what do you think? Do you think it's going to be a little bit slower? Hopefully? Hopefully. I don't know. I don't have a great prediction, but I'm going to go with yes. It's going to capture more air and move more slowly. Okay, I'm going to go with yes too. I'm pretty confident that I think this might be a little bit slower. And I want to make sure that I am also dropping it from a good way so that I don't mess it up with human error. Although, there we go. Are you ready? Nice and wide. Three, right. two, one. I was a little fast, but it yeah, did move slower. Did move the one. It did move slower, yeah. I could see it kind of, and it sort of had a side to side float a little bit. Let's try it one more time. Three, two, one. Oh, That's that good. looks great. 
That was awesome. It definitely was slower too. So it seems that maybe by changing that one material, we were able to get it to go slower. Although if we were to test this again, maybe we change it and do more strings or less strings. Maybe that was a little bit too much weight. Maybe we would do a string just straight to the bear. Maybe one layer of tissue paper. Now, I don't know that we have time to make all of those changes here, Becca, but I bet our friends at home, um, maybe over the weekend or during Massachusetts school vacation week, if you happen to have next week off, there's lots of ways that you can test out different materials you're using for your parachute, different things that you're dropping. Uh, again, just be cautious of what you are dropping and make sure that it's not going to break if it lands a little too hard. Yeah, and, and you can experiment with ways to make your parachute work. And also be sure to stay tuned to the museum social media so that you can see any other engineering activities or any other engineering videos that might be coming your way when it comes time to National Engineers Week. So Karen, thank you for doing this really fun activity with me today. And I hope that uh, everyone at home is able to try it out and enjoys working like an engineer. Ah, I loved it. This was so much fun, Becca. And I just want to remind everybody how easy it can be to be an engineer. It's not a daunting task. You just have to look at those problems and imagine possible solutions. So thanks, everybody. Bye.